Hey there, so in my previous video I talked about the value of qualitative research uh, and mixed methods research and how if you're a researcher it's worth investing in both sides of the equation. Uh, I just want to take it further today and give you another tip around that and just say that it is important from the outset when you are designing your research to decide what approach you're gonna take. In other words, what approach best suits you to be able to answer your evaluation or research questions. All right, that will guide you as to whether you need to take a qualitative approach, a quantitative approach, or a mixed method approach. Uh, certain questions are more suited to quantitative approach, certain questions are more suited to a qualitative approach, and certain questions are uh, suited to a, a mixed method approach. Nothing irritates me more than when people go out and collect qualitative data and then come to you and say, we want this analyzed quantitatively. You know, we've got these focus group discussions, these interviews uh, that we did. Uh, we would like you to, uh, uh, you know, code them and uh, uh, come up with figures, percentages, and so on, about how many people say this, what proportion of people say this, and what proportion of people say that, and so on. That just irritates me because I'm always thinking, why didn't you just go out there and do a survey if you wanted such numbers? You know, why did you go out and do key informal interviews and focus group discussions? You could have gone out and done a survey and got your numbers right from the beginning, right? And this can get very bad. You know, let me give you an example of a consultancy I had a, a couple of years ago with a very well-renowned international organization. Uh, and they hired me uh, uh, to do the qualitative aspect of their end line uh, evaluation for a project. They had already done a survey for that end line and they wanted to beef up the findings with uh, 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 focus group discussions and interviews, uh, sampling some of their, uh, uh, the same audience that they had done the survey with. So, you know, they brought this international consultant into the country and I escorted them around the country and uh, we collected data. We did some very nice interviews um, and focus group and came time for analysis. You know, I analyzed the, 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 the data qualitatively, as I know, uh, and I presented the findings to them and they said, well, well thank you, but uh, can we have figures to this? Um, I said, okay, you know, uh, I'll put figures. So I did uh, what I know qualitatively we should do with figures is to say things like eight out of 10 said, you know, five out of 10 said, or six out of 10 were of the opinion that, you know, which is uh, uh, acceptable if you want to put figures to, to uh, qualitative findings that way. But they said, no, uh, what, you know, why don't you make these percentages? We want percentages. I said, no, you know, I, I can't say 80% felt, 5% were of the opinion, 20% were of the opinion, because that interpretation of that percentage is very different in qualitative and quantitative research, purely because our sampling is very different. You know, in uh, quantitative research, I'll go out and, and take a random sample, and that randomicity means that I'm allowed to put percentages to it because uh, uh, I can say it's it's a representative sample statistically. But with um, qualitative research, of course, the sampling is purposive, right? Uh, you, you talk to people who you think are knowledgeable about the subject you are investigating and can give you in-depth information. Yeah, and the numbers are usually much lower for qualitative uh, data collection than for uh, quantitative data collection. So I said, no, um, I can't do that because, you know, it's not advisable to do that. You cannot compare the survey findings to uh, the qualitative findings. Uh, they went get ahead with, uh, against my advice to analyze this, these qualitative findings quantitatively. And so when I saw the draft report, it said something to the effect of, uh, you know, in the survey, 80% of respondents uh, were satisfied with their work environment, all right? But <laughs> uh, 
in the interviews we did, only 70% said they were satisfied with the work environment. And I was horrified. I was horrified. I was like, why would you start doing that? And then, you know, to conclude, they said, well, the, 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 the uh, survey findings uh, are probably more, uh, you know, uh, correct and so on and so forth. And I said, this is horrible. I mean, why would you f want to start a fight between your qualitative and quantitative findings? That's not the purpose of the data we collected. The purpose of the data we collected was to say, in the survey, 80% of respondents were satisfied with their work environment. And when we did key informant interviews, the things they were satisfied about were A, B, C, D. Those that were not satisfied were not satisfied about this and that aspect of uh, the work environment, you know, that is how you're supposed to use such findings to sub complement one another and not to start attacking one another in terms of that. So the analysis was totally wrong. And back and forth, a lot of emails, phone calls. In the end, I decided, well, you guys, you know, you are a reputable organization. Uh, you brought this international consultant here. And obviously, you're paying more attention to what uh, they have to say in terms of opinion than, than me, who is your local consultant here. So I'm going to let you go with what you decide to go with. Okay, but do me a favor. Don't put my name in the report. Uh, because, you know, I was not going to risk my reputation in that report. If somebody reads the report later and says, Oh, Dr. Simiemba was involved in this. And look what they did. You know, look how they analyzed the, 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 data, the data they collected. So I wasn't about to have that, and I just told them, uh, thank you very much, you know, uh, just leave my name out of the report and we'll be fine, you can do as you wish. Uh, which they did, you know, they went ahead and did that. But that just shows you a total misunderstanding of what qualitative and quantitative research is supposed to be and how this is supposed to complement one another when you are uh, using a mixed method approach, okay? Uh, and I've given an example of how they could have used it in terms of the, the findings complementing one another and they had plenty of findings that complemented one another uh, rather than creating this artificial fight between the qualitative and quantitative findings so remember that you know you can start with a quantitative piece and beef it up with qualitative findings for those aspects that you feel you need to go more in depth and find out more about sometimes though you can start with qualitative uh, findings and based on the themes that arise there, you say, well, we would like to take these themes further and put this to numbers. So let's take these themes, investigate them further and do a survey or something like that that is quantitative. So uh, approaches vary, but the important thing is to understand that the two methods should complement one another and not be at loggerheads in terms of, uh, of, of um, fighting one another. And uh, that's one thing I uh, found to be true in our Gavi for country evaluation work where we uh, we are evaluating the immunization program in Zambia that we've used that very well to investigate further our quantitative findings or when we have qualitative findings that we need then to put numbers to we do that very very well and the findings then uh, really speak to one another so that's our research tip for today folks good day <music>